One of the most famous sayings in the world of cinema is that you should never work with children. I'm sure you've all heard that before. Um, if for nothing else, then our first speaker today is remarkable for having totally blown this myth out of the water. Özge Karaoğlu is an English teacher, teacher trainer, and an educational consultant. And she teaches young learners, and in particular, teaches with web-based technologies. Her work has seen her collaborate with educational institutions on a worldwide scale. Her work with young learners has led her into authoring course books, writing songs, and even scripting DVDs. Recently, she's been developing animations, digital games, and even smartphone applications for her young learners. And it's in these areas that she's shown exceptional creativity and innovation. Her work here has been recognized and has earned her numerous awards. Uh, most notably, the English Speaking Union and Cambridge University New Writing Award. And this earned her a visit to Buckingham Palace and she received the award from the Prince of the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, currently, she's teaching kindergarten and she's enjoying every minute of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Özge Karaol. I am not talent. I've always felt that everyone I know is doing amazing things and I have absolutely nothing to offer. And actually, it didn't take me a long time to figure this out. All the men in my life, my dad, my brother, my husband, are all great at playing all kinds of music and instruments. It's as if they know all the songs from the, heart, um, from the oldest to the newest by heart. I'm not that kind of a person. I can't sing. I lose my breath and I have some very weird relationship with the tune and the rhythm of the songs. It's as if, uh, like I sound pretty on deaf. Like everywhere at school, children are singing the same song with the same melody, except my classes. In a way, my classes are always out of tune because I sing it in a totally different way than other teachers. And my melody is changing every year, so my students' melody is changing every year too. And end of the year shows are really very freaking me out. As you can guess, my career in music has always been out the door. And for some time, I thought that I had talent for dancing. But of course, it was until I watched my own dancing on my cousin's wedding video. Oh my god, I'm just not cut out for that. And I can't act too, so my dreams to become famous with photographers and cameras all around me has faded away in elementary school when the character I played literally fainted on the stage. And sports. Of course, I have had a few attempts to play basketball and volleyball, but a basic load of question is I'm baffled by how to hold the ball, let alone join a team. And maybe I was a little bit too short to play those sports anyway. And uh, I, sometimes I just got an idea in my head and I just want to draw it. But wait, I can only draw non-existing things. I can't even draw a straight line and my art is crap too. And I cannot make people laugh like none of you have laughed up until now. And in short, I don't have a spark of talent at being talented. Though, I have strong passions, I work and I practice a lot. I have always wanted to be an English teacher all through my life. Maybe it was because my mom was a teacher or my very first English teacher was the most beautiful woman in the world. I may have thought that if you become an English teacher, you become gorgeous too. But soon I realized that this was not the case. My later English teacher in high school had decided to divide the English department students into two as we were too crowded. So she gave us an exam on the day when the boy I had a crush on for a long time started the day, the most beautiful girl at school. You could imagine my feelings. My heart was broken, I was crying, I was desperate, and it was the end of the world. How could I answer the questions while the boy I was in love was in love with another girl? So I failed at the test. And I was put in the second class which everyone at school, including my English teacher, called the lazy class. People were asking me, or actually people were teasing me, are you in the lazy class? I hated my English teacher, and she didn't like me either. She told my mom that I considered myself far better than I really was, and she didn't think that I could pass the university exam. She simply said she can't do it. But there was something that she didn't know about me. Becoming an English teacher was my passion. 
not because I had no talent, but due to my love of it. I was young, but I learned one thing about life, and it was that if you are passionate about something, you can't be lazy about it. You will indulge yourself, you will work hard, you will practice a lot, and you will end up being good at it. And this has been the case for me. And maybe I had tried all those things in life and failed all the time, maybe in a way more adventurous and open-minded. I said, yes, I can do it. And guess what? I answered every single English question in the university exam correctly. And I even got an honors degree. I was a 246 rated students out of a million students all over Turkey. And it wasn't because I was smart or I was talented at English. I only worked hard, I practiced a lot, and I followed my passions. I'm, and I'm an English teacher today, and I love being one. It's great to be surrounded with kids. I find it very enjoyable and extremely inspiring. And also love technology. And my generation is not digital natives. I call myself a half digital native as I got my very first email back in when I was in university. And my younger cousin taught me the basic principles of competing in internet when she was only 10 years old and when I was a university student. Let's rewind a few backwards a few years ago in my career as a teacher. Uh, we were asked to create e-portfolios at school, but those were the days none of, when none of us knew what an e-portfolio is, an electronic place where you actually put your, all your accomplishments and all your achievements. And I started searching on internet, and this is how I got involved in technology and later blogging. It took me a very short time to turn everything that I had obtained about technology and education into a passion, but it took me a very long time to learn everything about it. I remember myself sitting in front of a computer, struggling to put some pictures and movies together to create a very simple movie on a movie maker. It was the most difficult thing in the world. Then I learned about blogging, and I said that, I should give it a try, but it was just an experiment at first because I didn't know if I would be able to write regularly or if I would have enough topics to keep it alive and I still have the same fear in me today. But I said that I should just give it a try and people said that, come on, you're just wasting your time and nobody would care to read what, what you are writing and you wouldn't be able to make yourself hurt right like that. But it was a passion for me, so I said, yes, I can do it. And I started looking into different blog posts and I read articles and newsletters that I can find to develop myself, to improve myself. And uh, I had actually, I'd never realized that it would do so many things to me, both personally and professionally. Today I can say that it's been the place, uh, it has enabled me to mature, not only as a teacher, but also as a person. And it's been the magic key that has opened many of the doors to me. For example, I could never imagine that one day a very simple blog could introduce me to a CEO and a young Hollywood actor in the US who wanted to hire me to work for them in an educational consultant role for a big company in the US that are producing a new DVD series for young learners and even though I didn't have that kind of experience before. Or I could never imagine that one day I would be officially invited to Buckingham Palace and not just to walk and visit rooms but actually attend a very special award ceremony and get my award from the prince himself. Or I, nor did I expect it to introduce me to a whole new educational world and become totally become obsessed with educational social media. I didn't expect it to introduce me to authors and publishers who wanted to give, give, who wanted to give me exposure and change my whole career in part. And of course, it did more things in me. Like in kindergarten, we are reading books and stories with children really loud to listen to and read and dramatize. This is how they actually learn English in a very participatory, in a very active way. And after looking into so many different course books and stories, I said that maybe I can come up with my own stories for my own children. And I had shared this idea of mine with my friends. They didn't say anything, of course, they just paused. And even the sky had its own limits. And I was young, but of course I was younger those days. And I was a non-native speaker of English. And even had I written my own stories, it wouldn't be possible to find a publisher to publish them. And I was disappointed a little bit, but it was already a passion for me, writing stories for children. So I said, yes, I can do it. And I started reading so many different stories in different languages. I've started 
And I started going to courses, taking courses, reading everything that I can find myself to improve myself, to, to be able to improve my writing. And I started writing small stories, first of all. I, I, go, got, I went into my classroom and I uh, told, told them to my students. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they didn't like it, they got bored, they yawned to my face, they didn't get excited. And maybe I had written most of my stories, rewritten them maybe hundreds of times. And when I think that they were complete, I recorded my voice and I filmed my children while telling that while they were telling my stories and I published them on my blog and as well as opening many and I did it in a way and as well as opening many of the doors uh, I didn't realize that my blogging has also helped me to write like I have become more confident in my writing style as well as finding it easier to network and reach other people and Today, I have my own course books and stories that children are studying and learning English through them. And if I hadn't worked hard, and if I hadn't followed my passions, I wouldn't be able to make this dream come true. And, and uh, in, like, uh, I wouldn't be able to make this dream come true. And, to, and most probably, pe people could see the hard work potential in me and the uh, passion in me on those virtual pages. And my blog today has helped me to land my dream job, as well as allowing me to open the doors inside me and helping me to get to the wellspring of, well of uh, ideas and creativity in me that I use to water on my community. And while all these things are happening in my career, I just wanted to share my passion with other people all around the world, giving workshops and doing talks to other people. And people said that you can't do it, it's very difficult because you're, an, you're, an, you're an, a non-native speaker of English. Your pronunciation, your intonation, your choice of words are not good and you're not authentic. And you won't be able to successful in this, commu in this successful community of these native speakers. But it was already a passion for me, so I said, yes, I can, yes, I can do it. And of course, I've been to a numerous number of conferences and talks all over the world, most of them online and most, most of them face-to-face. -face. I've taken courses and i read things and I've started writing my workshops and I practice it in the mirror to myself all the time. And I've started giving workshops, first of all, to a small group of audience. Then the, my audiences got bigger and I've given talks to a huge amount of audiences all over Europe. And you may think that I was successful, but I wasn't. As much as my successes, I've had many failures as well. Uh, I was rejected from conferences in my own country just because I'm a non-native speaker of English. They think that because I'm not going to take attraction and I'm not going to be popular as much as the other people. And I've given workshops where absolutely no one showed up. I was alone in the room. And uh, like, or I've given talks where people attacked me personally, despising me, just because I'm a kindergarten teacher and that are talking to other teachers who are teaching higher level than me. And I've seen people in my talks leaving the room, slapping the door to my face or yawning to my face and puffing around. And I got disappointed, of course, but this didn't stop me because it was a talking and giving workshop was my passion. But I did. I worked harder and harder and I practiced more and more. And like most people most of the time, I also got sometimes very harsh feedback on my talks. And people most of the time criticize me for speaking very fast. Actually, I speak, I speak English faster than my native language. And I'm sure you have realized that so far, right? And I had to change it. So I started practicing by myself. First of all, I recorded my voice and I listened to it back. By the way, it's still a process in action, okay? I practice it in the mirror, talking to myself, and I practice it with my mom who doesn't speak or understand a word of English. I practice it with my two-year-old niece while I was babysitting to her. I practice it with my husband while he was playing computer games, who has actually fed up with me because, you know, I, he has nearly memorized all my talks and he can be a great substitute for me if I am absent somewhere. And I practice it on the bus going to school and walking back home. Then I realized something. Everything is about your passion actually and how you present it to, to the listeners. And look where am I now? I'm at that. I'm a speaker at that. Maybe I may be doing the talk of my life. So, so sorry. Yes, I can do it. <laughs> yes, I can do it. And uh, I met with amazing people uh, in, in, my in my career, like 
uh, and most of them, most of them have been the inspiration. The amazing Philip Franklin and Ken Wilson and Shelley Terrell, Shelley Terrell and Nick Peachy, Graham Stanley and uh, Graham Stanley and two amazing Burjus, Burjus Akhil and Burjus Tezjan and Hawa Kangal and many more. And my interaction with these amazing people have given me rise and innovation in what I do. And they've been the source of my inspiration. And those people have supported me to nurture new ideas and they encouraged me, they pushed me to work harder and to become better. And also my little students in kindergarten. And my hard working and their inspiration and their creativity came together and we have created amazing project with them. For example, the very first cartoon that has been drawn and colored by kindergarten children all over the world. All over the world for the first time. Here, the ch we all, uh, our, our children draw all the pictures, and after that, we ask our children to uh, color, color the pictures. And after that, we they went into our animation studio and they recorded their voices uh, for uh, for the cartoons that you are seeing here. And the recording process was the most fun the, mo the funniest one because you know six year old children uh, standing in front of the recording room, waiting for their turns with their toys in their hands, getting excited, getting bored of repeating the same lines over and over. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But we did it. Then one day, one of my students told me that I wish I could read one of these stories on my mom's phone. I said, okay, let's do it. So we have developed the very first smartphone application that has been done by kindergarten children all over the world. And while we were playing computer games in, our, in, in the classroom to reinforce English, one of my students thought that I wish I could do one of my games. I said, okay, let's do it. So we have developed the very first digital, ga digital games that have been drawn, colored, uh, colored and animated animated and also adopted by kindergarten children themselves. And the process was very interesting actually. First of all, we asked our children, what kind of characters that you would like to play the games? As, as you can guess, they have drawn princess and princes and knights and dragons and all the cartoon characters that you can see on television. So we get gathered all the characters together and we have created these two Hello. lovely characters that are called... Hello, I'm Pepper. Hello, I'm Bubble. That's our called Bubble and Pebble by my own children. And after that, we asked my children, we asked our children what kind of games that they would like to play. And they had drawn so many different things and they have given lots of ideas to us. We put them together and we asked our children to draw everything that you are going to see in the games. And we did it. Now we have the digital games that are being developed, still being developed by kindergarten children and that are being played by millions of children all over the world today. I'm very techy, as you see. <laughs> okay. Hello, I'm Pippo. Would you like to play a game? Let's paint a rainbow. It's blue. Well done. My name is MMS. Help me, please. Find my glove. Hello, everyone. Let's play pictures. Hello, glove. Yes, we did it. We were applauded, we were celebrated, and we were awarded. And it's true, I have no talent. What I do is a lot of practice and drive, and this is a turning point. 
Success does not depend on an intelligence or any talent. It really comes to you by working hard and practicing a lot. I may not be the best person in my profession and I still suck sometimes. And there are hundreds of other people who are better than me, but this won't stop me. Your talent can be your hard work and you get it through practice. You may be a teacher like me or an engineer or a doctor and it really doesn't matter who you are or who you are going to be. The good thing about hard work is that it's universal and it pays off and it gets you to the same place with others. And follow your, passion to, follow your passions today and fulfill your dreams to become the best you can be. Because there is only one difference between whom you are and whom you are going to be. And the only difference is what you do today. And you may fail a few times and fails are only short stops before you move on to the next level. And uh, do not listen to other people who say that you can't. And try harder next time. An ancient poem mentions the runner who stumbles, falters, and fails that they should look to the horizon and persevere. And in Alice in Wonderland story that we all know, Alice laughed. There is no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say, you haven't had much practice, said the queen. Don't be Alice, be the queen. Because only you can stop yourself from becoming who you want to be. And, and, and uh, if you're waiting for a sign, actually, this is it. Believe in yourself, and even you have heard you come from others several times. Shut your ears and listen to your own heart saying, please, all together. Yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. Thank you very much.